So here we are at the start of day two. Now I've already rolled back to 12.40 because I didn't like how things went after I put my wife on the throne. But then I see that she's got the claimant faction and me leaving it doesn't stop them from declaring. So I roll back even further to 12.37. A lot of, uh, a lot of wasted time but not too bad. I then decide rather than marrying her I will get to work on the eugenics program so I find myself someone with a nice trait and get married to them. I, I was hoping to find someone who was genius and Herculean, but no luck on that one, so I'll settle for a genius for now. Now that I can increase my uh, crown uh, authority again soon, I'd say it's the time to start imprisoning some more people to get myself some more land. I uh, I aim for Urethiru because it's a really good province to be able to hold. If um, if it's your only province, the AI will never attack you. So I uh, I will eventually become a one province miner later in the game after one of the decisions. So I want to have that as my capital when I do, so I can just sit there safely for the rest of the game and chill. Don't have to worry about saves coming every attack. It's time there's some safes coming to like get a better air. I want uh, I need um I need pretty much perfect genetic traits for later in the game, so if I get a good start with it now then it'll vastly speed that up. So I just keep reload rolling until I get a get a genius. Hoping that they'll also inherit pure blood and I eventually got one. So there we go. I can uh, carry on and eventually find more spouses with uh, Herculean and uh, beautiful traits to, to pass those on as well. I decided to try and get Hoyd to join my court because he's got very good stats and I can then marry him off to start producing more members of the house was the plan, just to get the renown going a little bit. But I had some difficulties getting him to get married with the whole consensual marriage system. It's uh, I tend to play with the rule turned off when I'm just playing for fun, but for the purposes of, of doing an Adonalsium run, it's not valid if you have that rule set to off, so I had to, uh, I had to turn it on. And I'm not uh, over-experienced with uh, how it works, so I may well have been messing up to stop Hoyt getting married, I don't know. Um, I think I concluded in the end it was because she would say no because of a different faith, that's the reason that... There was never an option to actually send a marriage proposal. I, I, I don't know. The, the system's kind of confusing. Still trying to get Urethiru revoked, but um, they're not saying yes just now, so... I 
Yeah, the uh, primary reason I choose to go with Imprison rather than Revoke is A, I can't Revoke until I get my Crown Authority up, but as soon as I raise my Crown Authority they will all start rebelling to decrease it. So if I just imprison a bunch of people in advance, I can then revoke all of their titles at once uh, as soon as I raise it, and then when they lower it again it doesn't matter, I've got, uh, I've got my extra titles. Trying to get another wife here this time with the beautiful trait for the more eugenics. There we go with those revoked and the church holding granted out. That's me up back up my domain limit, so I can uh, I can fold to the faction when it presents its demands and uh, wait until I've bumped that domain limit up before doing this again in a, another few years. You might have seen that I searched for the Mistborn trait there. The main reason for that is I noticed that because I didn't join Hoyd's house because I created my own cadet branch, it means there is no one with the Mistborn trait in the entire world this time, which is annoying because I was hoping to acquire it later on, but um, the only person in the world with it is Brandon Sanderson, which is the guy who wrote the books that the mod is based on. The plan is to kidnap him and steal it using Ferrochemy later, but that won't actually work because as it turns out he's completely immune from personal interactions, so you can't actually do that. So at this point that I noticed that my um, my cultural fascination actually hurts whatever it's on. The chances of it progressing are negative, and they're more negative the more high my learning is. So I uh, I'll actually want to be at zero learning as much as I can for that. The uh, my king here decides to demand that I convert religion, which is quite annoying because I uh, I quite like being Aiden Elzik. You'll notice that we've also swapped uh, to the Colon Empire. This is again that actually the Empire of Theory. No, not quite sure why they swapped their primary title. AI yeah, do that sometimes. They chose one that means they've got zero uh, <laughs> sure vassals from their primary title. But I, th I don't think it actually provides any penalties in this like it does in CK2. So, not too bad. At this point I'm starting to build my economy a little bit, 
Uh, I'm hesitant to build many buildings because A, they cost three times as much, and B, I get one sixteenth. Sorry, I get sixteen percent of the normal money out of them. So you know, it's a pretty hard proposal for them to pay themselves back in any reasonable amount of time. I do still tend to actually do the um, economic focus buildings because they impact the amount of money I get from things like extorting subjects and selling minor titles as well as um, any income from events and I don't think that, that that's being reduced by the percentage um, it seems too high to be being reduced I'm not sure could be wrong but I uh, either way I decide it's worth getting getting some money out of it because while I don't intend to ever fight wars one of the decisions later is going to require me to have like 20,000 ducats in cash on hand and it's also going to require me to make a bunch of titles and it's it's painful I'll need a need a lot of money, which at the point one ducks a month I was making before is uh, it's gonna take a long time. So yeah, I uh, will kick my income up at about four gold now, so it's not too bad. Or oh, sorry, gems. See, I'm still trying to kick the eugenics program up, getting people with good genetic traits to come to court. Just got to uh, get all these traits into the dynasty to start with. And now it's, uh, it's no time to actually create the uh, create the faith. I'll play most of the game with. Uh, the main reason I want to do it now is because it gets rid of consensual marriages, so I can just start doing it with political marriage, which is really, really nice. There's really not a whole lot to say about day two, it's uh, mostly just waiting. I don't think I claim a single Shardic victory in the second day. I just make a bunch of progress towards various ones and uh, you know get a decent realm below so I can uh, sit here safely and not have to worry about constantly being attacked by random AI. I um, need to make a lot of progress with, uh, with eugenics and I need a lot of renown so uh, I'll eventually start working on getting a bunch of bow shapers into my dynasty because they provide percentage bonuses to renown, which, while the uh, my base renown is so small, it won't be a whole lot, but uh, I can eventually kick that off a bit. Start if I chill on the eugenics and marry some people out to other realms to start boosting that base renown up. It'll uh, it'll accelerate pretty quickly.
this province ends up getting its independence somehow. I think it's inherited by someone else. So I uh, declare war for it initially and raise up 2,800 men and I'm now losing 17 ducats a month. I think I'm paying like 25, 30 ducats for half of, well not quite half, half of my army basically though. And that's with no men at arms. So that's all levies and it's a ridiculous expense. So that's why I, uh, I basically don't fight any wars the normal way in the entire campaign. And uh, yeah, I'll eventually decide that that war is uh, too costly, so I will roll back and not let someone else conquer it instead. <laughs> the, uh, the hope is that one of my vassals will attack it. I um, If not, I can do it later with imprisoning him via a kidnap scheme and then declare war. But uh, we'll see what's actually necessary when it's necessary. I don't need to hold it until it's time to do Devotion and Dominion, which is still a fair while off yet. I would need to have enti entirely united my realm, I think, or be ready for invention, neither of which is happening anytime soon. At this point I've noticed that um, there's one downside to me just randomly revoking provinces from people, which is that a, um, the progression speed at which I uh, reach the next Radiant rank is greatly decreased by having tyranny, and I have a lot of tyranny from just randomly revoking provinces, and I have a um, very low tyranny decay rate because of the two boons that I got from the Night Watcher. Both of them gave negative 50%. I can get plus. I've got plus fifty percent from a policy that luminocracy and bureaucracy governments have access to. So it's still positive. It is just very low and very slow, but we will get there eventually. doesn't really matter if it takes forever since I'm immortal and the game rule is set to have the game not end so I can I can play this for 3000 years if that's what it takes you're wondering right now how many days are in this <laughs> this series of videos aren't you starting to get some pretty good descendants from the eugenics program so soon it'll be time to kick the incest into high gear. I've got the uh, pure blooded trait which means there's it's less likely for there to be complications from it but it's still, they still pop up every now and then. Fortunately the victory that I need all of these good genetic traits for, cultivation's victory, it only checks that you have all of the positive traits. It doesn't care if you also have traits like inbred or any of the other negative traits that can pop up as long as it's not one of the ones that uh, you know, conflicts with the positive version. So I can't have, uh, I can't have the kid be ugly because I need them to be beautiful, all that stuff. My attorney is finally decreed to a reasonable level, so I'm uh, making progress towards the next rank of Bondsmith again, which is real nice. Uh, yeah, um, I don't really have much use for it. At Bondsmith rank 2 I'll be able to start using surges, but they, um, ultimately they, the surges that I have as a Bondsmith just decrease building cost and building time, 
which, you know, given that I'm not doing a whole lot of building, aren't hugely impactful. I will need to reach rank 5 before I can take honours victory, but uh, that's, that's a long way off anyway. Given that there's not a whole lot to talk about for what I'm actually doing today, it's literally just sit and wait. Uh, I will talk more about the plan for the run as a whole. I've already claimed Harmony's victory, that counts as two of the 11 victories that I'll need to claim for honour. The plan is then to save up the victories of Mercy, which just requires me to forgive a bunch of people and not have killed anyone basically, as well as having some personality traits. The victory of Whimsy, which requires uh, Hoyd's dynasty, which is my dynasty, to be at the maximum level of renown and the victory of invention which requires you to have be in the final era uh, era for your culture and either for your capital to have 100 development or for you to have 100 learning as well as having some trait requirements uh, all three of these once i get them basically cannot be lost so i can save them all up and trigger them all at once the reason i want to do this as honors victory honors victory requires you to have uh, a certain number of level 5 Radiant Counselors. It's, as a base, it's 9. If you start imprisoning some of the unmade, that'll decrease. If you're playing on a lower difficulty, then playing, then uh, imprisoning the unmade will also decrease the level that the Radiant Counselors need to be, but playing on Double Stupid, they still need to be level 5. Um, the reason that saving up these three victories helps is that each time you claim a victory, your Radiant Counselors gain one level. So by saving these three victories that can be claimed at any point, all I have to do is wait for a full council of level 2 Radiance, and then I can pop these three victories back to back. They all become level 5. I can take Honor's victory. This unfortunately kills my character, and I will have to start playing a new one, uh, at which point I hope that my heir, when I claim this, will be eligible for Cultivation's victory, which requires you to have level 3 uh, positive intellect, the genius trait, uh, and the same equivalent for uh, physique and beauty. Th it also requires you to have the pure blooded trait, which is why I started with it, because it's really hard to get naturally. Uh, it requires you to have the fecund trait. How the fuck do you say that word? Fecund? Fecund? Who cares? Uh, and it requires you to have the giant trait. So I started with all of those, although the giant traits are obviously at level 1 rather than level 3. But ultimately, I need to pass them all on to a perfect heir, and by this point, given that I have to claim invention, I'll be in the fourth era, so I can have um, I can have primogeniture, so my realm won't shatter. Uh, with that next character, the plan will then to be to claim ambition, which requires you to be ambitious and have the adventure trait, and then have every single dynasty legacy in the game, apart from the two from the Northern Lords pack that are locked by certain cultures, doesn't require those. Um, and then there's some requirements about having maximum prestige and piety level and all this stuff. But the important part is it requires you to not be immortal, which means I'm going to be playing this current character for a long time because the hope is that I can do it with two characters. This one plus the guy who takes over when I do honour and I can then claim Ambition's Victory with him. Ambition's Victory makes you immortal so I don't have to die again. That'll then put me at at 10 victories, since I've done Devotion and Dominion, which is 2 as well. The final victory I intend to go for is Endowment, which requires you to have 1000 realm size. It requires your dynasty to have the dynasty of many crowns modifier. It requires you to have gifted 10 empire titles. There are barely 10 empires on the map. Uh, I don't even know if there are 10 empires on the map, I did bother counting, because I'm just going to gift the same one over and over again. We'll get to that later. The um, And it then requires you to have a frankly ridiculous amount of gems and investiture. I believe it's the number of your dynasty members squared, with a cap at a million. So, it's going to take a long time for that as well. I've th I plan to do that last, just because... Uh, you know, I would, oh uh, yeah, I want my realm to be fairly simple when I have the succession, and then I, because um, my heir won't be particularly good, and I don't want 
all the AI rebelling, and you know I'll be immortal with that last character, so I can take my time and to claim Adrenalium, the final decision after claiming living victories. I need 65 in every stat anyway, which at this point I think means I'm going to have to wait for the bonus from maxing out the Kin Tree of Dynasty Leg Seeds, which gives you a chance to just gain random stat points every year. Uh, I plan to just let that tick up slowly over hundreds of years to get me to the 65. Whether or not that will prove to be necessary is uh, something we'll see as we get there. That's basically the plan for the entire run. I am... Um, the most complicated part was really designing the character to be able to claim all these victories and be eligible to become a bondsmith because all the traits you take impact your uh, impact your compatibility with the various radiant orders and I then had to also have the balance of the right traits to claim harmony and all this nonsense. But the actual run itself is fairly repeatable, I think, now that I've uh, got it down. There's a... Uh, it's... The most complicated part, as I said, was definitely just coming up with the path in the first place. There are uh, there are victories that are mutually exclusive with each other, essentially, so you have to get them done in the right order. Well, I guess mutually exclusive is the wrong word. They're only mutually exclusive if you do them the wrong way. So, uh, finally got my third dynasty perk there. I'm working my way through the Radiant Legacy tree. The main reason for that is the final level increases my radiant progression speed which is nice since I need to be a rank 5 radiant and it lets me choose one type of radiant to become much more uh, prevalent in my dynasty and if I choose will shapers that will hugely boost my renown gain and speed up acquiring whimsy and ambition. The advantage of uh, shamelessly save scumming whenever anything goes wrong is that when I get assassinated I can sometimes figure out who it was who killed me which lets me uh, go back and either duel them to hope that they'll die if their health's low enough or I can just try and imprison them to cancel their plot. Uh, so it's, uh, it cuts a lot of time off the run versus waiting for a 95% plot chance to fail. I, uh, I'm just really glad there's no requirement to do this on Iron Man because fuck that. Like, don't get me wrong, even on Iron Man, I would save scum by making backups with all the saves, but that would just be so much extra work. There is no way in which I would do this without saves coming. That's basically not possible on this difficulty. I, I, like, on normal, that would be pretty straightforward. I'm pretty sure I could do that without saves coming. On double stupid, no chance. The debuffs are just too high. Already gone over most of the economic ones, although there is also a penalty to prestige. Uh, piety and dynasty prestige gain, so that hurts. There's um, penalties to development growth of negative 100% speed and negative 0.4 flat development growth. Their titles cost twice as much to make, uh, sorry, three times as much to make, negative 6 to domain limit. Uh, my uh, fascination speed from being cultural head is reduced by uh, it was negative 100% just now. That's that's now been changed to negative 80%, which is nice. Um, I lose prestige for having knights. I um, lose stress. Uh, sorry, I lose martial skill for having a high stress level. My men at arms and armies cost three times as much. Mercenaries cost three times as much. Holy orders cost three times as much. I can have six fewer knights. I can have four fewer men at arms, and the size of my men at arms 
sorry, I can have two fewer men at arms and the size of my men at arms is four lower. This actually puts my men at arms size limit at negative one at the start of the game, which is another reason I had to disband them all because there's a penalty for being over the size limit uh, in the form of increased maintenance, which is multiplicative, I believe, with the increased maintenance from the, from the uh, difficulty modifier. I then also get negative 40 pro prowess per stress level. I gain less dread. That's actually a good thing because dread hurts. Um, having dread would make my men at arms more expensive if I had them. I don't, but uh, yeah, there's, there's there's more penalties to dread than benefits with uh, this culture and the mod in general. Like the um, the culture has something that gives me negative prestige gain from stress. So if I have under stress, I have ne negative hundred percent prestige which stacked with the difficulty modifiers is not nice. Uh, I have negative 40 general opinion, negative 20 years life expectancy. My hostile schemes are weaker and I have negative 100% diplomatic range, as well as losing some monthly lifestyle XP and negative 40 off my court's grandeur, which is one of the reasons that I chose to go with no uh, court amenities on top of not being able to afford them they would probably not put me above zero grandeur anyway, so there isn't a whole lot of point of, in paying for them. I may as well just save the money. The AI also gets buffed by the difficulty, of course. It can't just debuff the player. So the AI gets 70% off their men at arms maintenance, half price mercenaries, levies reinforced twice as fast. It's free for them to uh, embark onto boats. They don't lose prowess from old age, and they get one extra domain limit as well as all of their vassals liking them more. So it's, uh, it's, it's pretty painful in general. The the only reason this double stupid difficulty exists is that uh, I did an Aiden Alzheimer run on stupid briefly after he introduced it. So he made this instead. It has, it's probably been like more than a year now and I've only just got around to doing a run on it. It's, uh, it's going to be absolutely worth it to see the despair that it causes him him being Dobson, the mod's creator. As you saw there, I finally finished the Radiant Legacy tree and took the uh, the increased chance for Will Shapers. I, uh, I did briefly consider uh, taking increased Bondsmith chance because I'll need another Bondsmith later. But I decided, no, I can save scum my way out of that. So I will take the increase Will Shaper chance and get the increases uh, to my Dynasty Legs again. And then decided it's time to create a a new culture. The reason I do this is because that one is in the Age of Desolations while mine has barely even started working through the Age of Radiance so I'll uh, just yoink all of their progress which uh, will make invention that much closer and give me a bunch of uh, bunch of innovations to work with. At this point, I'm just about to take a break for the day. I was about to go and have my dinner, I think. And for some reason, I just said, it would be funny if I tap all of my stored memories and wakefulness in one month. I don't know why I did this. I sat here and clicked for God knows how long. Uh, it was not worth it. Doesn't doesn't provide any benefit over just tapping it for like 10 months. But uh, I did it. Uh, probably annoyed Tozen, because he now has capped it. So you can only tap... Um, up to double what your maximum storage rate is, so you know, there's, there's no more tapping 5,000, uh, sorry, 1,500 worth of uh, memories in one month. At this point, I've pretty much decided that uh, I will not be claiming invention uh, early to make D and D easier to push on Dominion. I'll be saving it, so that's why I'm now focusing on revoking the stuff within the Shattered Plains primarily because I only need to control one kingdom to be eligible to claim devotion and dominion, so if necessary I can grant the rest of it independence.
but you know, the, hopefully I can get my domain limit high enough that I can hold it all, but we'll see as we get there. As you can see, the eugenics program is going pretty well. We've got some characters that have all the required traits apart from uh, giant. But, uh, that's it's going to take some saves coming later because by that point, I think I've got most of the blood tree filled out, which means that uh, despite the fact that I want giant because its class is a negative trait, uh, the chances of inheriting it go down because of all the uh, the bonuses from the blood tree. Even if I choose it as the uh, the trait to be more common in my dynasty, it's still a fairly low chance, so it takes a fair bit of saves coming to uh, to get that passed on. Yeah, at this point, I decided to start trying to revoke a bit more land. Uh, yeah, I'm already over my domain limit, but I can buff that just by getting more stress, so it's not too bad. So, so yeah, that guy said no. One. Thought I'd drive out the war, but absolutely not happening. So go back to the old save scum until they'll get in prison method. Uh, I did mention this run was not at all fun to play, right? Like this is this is not a fun way to play CK3. That is, uh, it was entirely entirely done so I can torment Tobson by saying I've managed this. Got a few peasant wars here and there, but that's actually a good thing. Uh, something I didn't mention: the placeholder trait means that whenever you win a defensive war, you get plus one domain limit and minus one vassal limit. So I can use that just farm peasant wars to increase my domain limit as well. Between that and getting stress levels, I don't really have to worry about how big my domain is. I can uh, I can buff the domain limit as high as I really need to. I think. There, there is obviously a cap of how high you can go from stewardship because it caps at 100 but I can just stack placeholder on top of that and get as high as I need to. There is a victory, autonomy's victory. It provides plus 100 domain limit. It used to be one of the easiest victories in the game. All you had to do was be an emperor, have at least 10 realm size and have no vassals. So that was pretty straightforward. You just uh, revoke all the land. Who cares that you're over your domain limit, you're about to get plus 100. The problem is that he has changed that victory. It now requires the entire world to have... Every province in the world needs to have a faith that does not allow slavery. And basically, there are religions at each edge of the world that allow slavery. You basically have to do a world conquest and then convert it all to one religion. The problem is that that also means you can't claim invention. Because one of the benefits from claiming the invention victory is every province in the world gets 100 development. And it is functionally impossible to convert a province with 100 development. So that means you have to play without that for the entire time if you're going for endowment. Uh, endowment? Sorry, if you're going for autonomy. Which is a shame because, you know, getting 100 development in all of your provinces helps solve a lot of the problems that come from having all of these debuffs from the difficulty that uh, really helps your income out, but that is not to be. So that's why uh, that's why I didn't plan on making autonomy part of the run. 
it's uh, it's just too much of a, a hassle for a for the benefit. It would likely be one of the last ones to complete anyway, so the 100 domain limit wouldn't actually be helpful. You know, like say by that point you have to have conquered basically the entire world, so who cares? At this point I decide to start working on Devotion and Dominion again because I've almost revoked everything in my realm so I can actually claim it this time. So I start looking for people with a claim on the Empire. So the plan there is just to kidnap them, marry them, put them on the throne via either kidnap and claimant faction or if they've got enough support to a normal claimant faction. Um, and then it's just... A straightforward fact of getting them to be my best friend, which is not as straightforward as I thought it was, and getting them to be my soulmate. That one is pretty straightforward. And then just waiting out the uh, conversion of all my land so the popular opinion is high enough. The, um, the faith I created uh, intentionally has really high hostility with everyone, because that lets me farm peasant revolts for infinite domain limit. But that does mean that I have to convert everything before I can do... Uh, before I can do Devotion Dominion because it provides so much of a popular opinion debuff. At this point I've started manipulating uh, Wakefulness Ferragami to purposely sit as close to 299 stress as I can. The reason I do this is that at uh, above 300 stress, the level 3 stress break almost always has uh, an event, oh, sorry, almost always has some outcome in which, all, all the outcomes rather, make you lose stress. Whereas at level 2, the stress breaks have a third option, which is always gain stress. But if I just store all my wakefulness, then I don't gain any stress from that, so I can just sit at 299 stress. The reason you want to set 299 is A, I get a lot of benefits from high stress level in the form of a lot of uh, stewardship, and B, radiant progression speed is directly impacted by your stress. So having 299 stress provides plus 299% radiant progression speed. So by doing that, I can get closer to my rank 5 bonds with that I need much faster. So it uh, helps out like that. At this point, I'm scrolling through Thelena, trying to find the people that have perfect gems. I found one from the Queen. I've already stolen that. Uh, I don't know if there is only one now. There used to be three, I think. Couldn't find them, but I just gave up eventually. They provide uh, they provide extra tax income, so it'd be nice to hold them as core artifacts, but it's not too bad. Just uh, give up on it and stick with the one I've got. Having one will still allow me to imprison uh, any of the unmade should they show up, so that's nice. That'll... Uh, Cut the number of radiant counselors I need to fill honors victory later on, as well as actually imprisoning them provides a sudden hit of renown, so good for progressing towards whimsy and ambition as well. And that is basically where I call it for day two. I didn't get any victories done, but I'm making good progress on devotion and dominion and whimsy, so we'll get there soon.